All right, here we are again with the uh, barrel heater with the uh, air to air exchanger and the air to water exchanger. And uh, I just run it here, and as you can see, uh, despite my quality of hose, you'll notice that it got so hot it actually melted through my pipe insulator. So that is not something um, that I was hoping to have to deal with. Um, I'm glad all these bugs are coming out now. So I'll show you how I'm going to rectify it and I'll show you what caused that. Um, I've switched to wood in the in the burner. It uh, it's definitely a lot quicker heat, and the fire seems to spread more throughout the burn the the burn chamber. Therefore, it's my my heat exchangers are doing a very good job. A little bit more than uh, they were originally when I started setting up the system. But I'll show you what happened, and it all relates back to using what you have and here's what I had is I had an air conditioning I believe it's a condenser evaporator whatever you want to call it I don't even know it's it's basically a radiator but it's not your typical radiator with your uh, your uh, fill spout on the top sort of deal so this has always been restrictive uh, use a pond pump using pond pumps to circulate the water submersibles and is very restrictive it has a, a many many uh, chambers if you will to fill so it does a really good job of the heat exchange or cooling if you will however the impurities in my antifreeze that I'm using have plugged it and of course plugging caused that line out there with a reasonable fire under it to overheat and actually make steam which is not really something I want to do I'd, I'd just sooner deal with warm water not that there's anything wrong with steam but uh, my daughter is going to be out here with me so I don't really want these hoses at 180 degrees um, and as you can see they can't even handle that temperature that one hose fatigued so here's my solution um, now I know not everyone's going to have one of these laying around but this is a mini radiator and as space is a concern in this little greenhouse I thought it would be a perfect candidate for my heating project uh, this is actually off of a YZ I'm a YZ collector and this is off one of the first liquid cooled YZ's they made it's off a of 125 uh, 1982 125 I believe and it uh, it's got signs of damage on the fins, but uh, with a quick uh, pressure test, just by blowing in it and plugging off the other end, it uh, it's more than suitable for what I'm about to do with it. So I have uh, decided to use this as my uh, as my radiator for uh, the the water end of things. So I'm going to get this mounted up, and I'll show you how I do it. Um, and uh, Hopefully it makes makes more more sense and it's a little bit more uh, safer. Um, and I'll explain why. I'm going to put this valve on the on the entrance on the inlet line to this. This way here, I can squeeze a little bit, increase the temperature of the water. Uh, there will be a lot less resistance in this, so the pump will just want to fire the water right through it. And it's not going to give the water in the in the uh, in the uh, stove a chance to get real hot even though there's two uh, copper um, coil uh, exchangers in there that's still not maybe be enough because I don't want to run a raging fire so I can squeeze it back with this hold the water in the in the stove a little longer and uh, let the the blower extract as much heat as I can off this small radiator so I'll make that therm thermostatically controlled um, and that's how, here's how I'm going to do that. I already have it built. I took my uh, baseboard heater switch, which I had to make this special plate to mount it in there. That's why I didn't just go with a double box. And on the back side here, you'll see a couple of receptacles there. So we're going to plug this blower fan in so that 
when the thermostat calls for more heat, it switches on this receptacle. This will be plugged into the receptacle and away she blows, right? Same note when the thermostat calls for more heat. The top plug-in or whichever one will be plugged into this blower here. And this blower I'm going to mount underneath here because the reason why I want it low first of all so it's compact out of my way so I don't have to take this system out in the summer when I don't need it I just kinda want it out of the way secondly um, we'll keep our heat low to, to heat the lower part of the greenhouse because uh, this one here is definitely gonna warm up the top half rather quickly but not so much time spent in the bottom half of the greenhouse so even with circulating fans you're still gonna notice a pretty big degree difference between the bottom and the top of the greenhouse so um, I'd like to uh, compensate for that with this system here hoping hoping you know and I'm sorry to drag you guys through the mud here I spent a lot of time with this and there's nothing wrong with it but what I'd have to do is filter it so that it doesn't plug up but I can hardly blow through it I can blow through it but it's very difficult and it's no wonder the pump couldn't do it so we're, we're not gonna phase this out yet but at this point we're gonna use something a little bit more suitable so I don't get those smoking hot temperatures I had it up to 35 degrees Celsius in here it's definitely cooled down now the heat is uh, backed off here I out of focus there but uh, yeah we're sitting at about 12 degrees in here right now and that's just with the uh, sunlight we have here so that's what I'm going to do and I will of course uh, shoot some updates here and like I say I apologize again um, but I, I want the system working right and I have no problem showing you guys uh, my failed attempts uh, it might point anyone else in the right direction as well um, that radiator like I say was just laying around and I'm sure ain't gonna go out and buy one when I have one sitting here so um, it's uh, the old make and do and I know a lot of us do that that's probably why we're building our own greenhouse heaters <laughs> so uh, bear with me here we're gonna get it um, and uh, hopefully this is a step in the right direction if not it's another lesson learned so uh, oh for now all right we got her all hooked up here we're just doing a flow test well, you can see that in there but we've got just a little bit of antifreeze coming she's just nice and slow I've got my smaller weaker pump hooked up right now we can always change that out for something a little bit bigger but uh, you'll see I've got my uh, bathroom blower fan mounted behind my little uh, YZ radiator and uh, the supply line coming in the bottom here with variable flow up into the bottom slowly slowly fills the radiator and uh, you can see she's coming up in there now and then it'll overflow out the uh, top outlet of the radiator back down into the uh, into the coolant pail so we'll see what kind of flow we get off this there it is now and uh, if we think that that little pump is going to cut her We'll let her go. I'll maybe throw some, uh, throw a couple of logs back on the fire there. So we've got uh, probably a little bit too much flow there, based on my heat exchanger out in the in the barrel burner. But uh, just want to show you here. I've got my uh, my blower motor plugged into that receptacle. It's thermostatically controlled. The thermostat's nice and low. So it's going to be picking up more of the lower temperatures in here. So I may have to set this a little bit lower. We might set this for say 8 or 10 degrees Celsius. And uh, and the way we do that, we could just put a thermometer down here nearby it. And wherever it cuts in and out, is, we could just make a mark on there. Because that's just numbered 0 through 10. So once we, we figure out what the temperature we need down here, the top portion of the greenhouse, of course, is going to be warmer. So And then we're going to go ahead and we'll plug this blower fan down into that same receptacle so that when there's a call for heat in the greenhouse this thermostat will turn on this blower and this blower this one blowing warm air this one's this one blowing warm air through the radiator from the heated water now the pump 
should be left on. They do not draw much power anyway. They are very, very uh, power friendly. Um, it should be left on, keeping the, uh, the, the coolant circulating through the fire. Um, the only other thing I might automatically control here, and we'll just see how this works. I mean, if it works, you know, pretty good, then, then so be it. If not, we may have to add some draft control to the actual barrel burner. Because when I turn the fire up, it roars and it's too hot. But when then when I turn it down, it seems to almost after a while put the fire out. So I, I want to burn kind of the bigger logs. I don't really want to splice or I slice this all up so it burns out quick. So I want logs in there so they'll burn all night. They'll just sit there and and uh, and uh, remain, you know, in their cherry state rather than a, a large flame state. So I'm happy with that kind of flow. That's a little bit more than we need. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in this blower fan here, and then I'll probably go light up the fire here, and I'll give you an update here if, if it's gonna work here or not. All right, I got the fire lit. You can see we're starting to get some uh, heat coming in here. I, uh, I had a little thermos thermometer and I can't seem to find it, so I guess we'll use the temp gun here. So we're at about 45, 48 degrees at the top, and about 50 degrees at the bottom. So obviously this, uh, this radiator does not cool as efficiently as the old one did. So what we do have to keep in mind is we don't want this water heating up so much that our pump can't handle the heat. I want to show them about uh, not even 10 degrees yet on the, on the pipe there. So about 10 degrees at the top of the water there, so uh, it's not blowing uh, immense amounts of heat, but it is warm, it is quite warm. So uh, I'll keep trying her here, I'm going to turn this fan here on, uh, I'm just going to get a shot in there, temperature, we're at about 4.8, when I turn it on. Get up to here. Yeah, she's climbing real quick there, so we'll uh, we'll let the system warm up here and uh, see how it's going to perform. I'll just show you here the temperature in the greenhouse right now it is about eight degrees, seven degrees, and we are losing our sun. It is out there, but it is. Uh, it's fading fast, so it'll be a good test for the system. Okay, okay um, I've just uh, checked my antifreeze strength level. Um, now, a lot of people uh, may not need to go through the extremes I have to up here, but being from Canada, we all know what antifreeze is. So anyway, I was only getting a, a zero degree reading on the, uh, on the mix I have in there. So just to test my antifreeze tester, I just stuck it in a new bottle, a new jug of antifreeze, and it seems to be working fine. So I'm going to add straight antifreeze to my mix here. Um, once I get it mixed properly, it can just stay in here. It'll be good for uh, the minus temperatures, even when the system's not in use. Um, and that way I have more volume, and I don't have to worry about my, my water supply heating up to a point where my pump is going to take a hit. So I've got my, uh, found my little thermometer that I was whining about and I just suck it down there onto this switch here and when this cuts out, when that thermostat is turned all the way down right now and everything's still running so it's too cold in here. So when it cuts out I'll check that temperature and uh, we'll see, we, we will be able to reference what uh, temperature, desired temperature you want. 
on that dial there. I'll just make some marks for the pin. So uh, as we stand right now, um, the system of the water seems to be running, you know, lukewarm. So I'll maybe crank that valve back a little bit there and uh, slow that water flow down. You see she's really, uh, really peeling through there. A little bit too quick, I think. And uh, as for up here, I'm gonna keep an eye on my squirrel cage temperature, which is 32 degrees. And up in here, it's a reflective surface, so it's, like it's terrible for shooting temperatures. Um, maybe I can shoot. Yeah, so we're at about the 34, so that to me means the fire isn't really cooking yet. So I'll maybe go out there and adjust some draft or whatever. And uh, I'll take it from there. Alright, my uh, antifreeze is in there. It's uh, I'll have to let it uh, mix around with what was in there for a while there before I test it to see its strength with my antifreeze tester. Um, I've choked this valve back a little bit here to slow the flow down some. I still think I might be going a little bit quick, uh, but that valve is uh, a design failure. It's very, uh, very tricky to uh, squeeze delicately. It's kind of an all-or-nothing sort of sort of deal. So uh, my thermostat still hasn't cut out, and I'm sitting at about uh, see there, about eight degrees or so. Uh, this might be a bit of a delayed reaction too. It might take a little while to warm that iron up. It's also on the outside wall, so it's it's probably going to uh, overcompensate. But uh, I do have it turned all the way down. Oh. Okay. Well, I just shut off just by triggering it. I turn her on there. Good luck. We'll shoot for at least 10 degrees here at the in the basement, if you will, and uh, we'll see what happens here. Just wanted to mention here, it's been, oh, I don't know, we'll say 20 minutes, probably closer to 15, and we're already up to uh, 14 degrees in the greenhouse. Um, sun is still uh, still hanging, it changed much, so uh, you can see that the, the, the forest air is definitely doing the brunt of the work like I can feel the draft over here and I'm, I'm standing in the middle of the greenhouse so not a big greenhouse and uh, that little guy down there I mean it's kind of you know, it's nothing to brag about I'll, I'll promise you that a uh, bigger radiator here definitely you're gonna get uh, more action out of it uh, a car radiator or in this case a bike radiator uh, much easier flow than my previous attempt here of an air conditioning radiator. Um, that's more of a gas that's going through there. It cools the gas off. Uh, when it comes out, I think it's a liquid. It goes in as gas. Um, this here is liquid in, liquid out, so it's a lot more, uh, a lot more flowable. But uh, anyway, we'll keep you posted on how this thing's going to work. Okay, we're definitely out of the influence of the sun here. Uh, we're, we're holding our uh, 15, 16 degrees. But uh, I'm experiencing something I'm not exactly sure what. But uh, if I choke that valve there, I'm just going to turn this to low. If I choke that valve to heat the water up more, this red one here. Every once in a while, it almost airlocks the pump. And I think it's because it's making steam and the pump can't push on it. So you have to open up that valve. Now, this works best when it's sitting at about 80 degrees. Um, but it's a fine line. I'm not exactly sure how to rectify it at this point, but uh, it tends to, like I say, It'll, it'll lock itself up. You'll get the temperature just come along nice. And then it'll lock itself up and you have to open that valve up in order for it to recoup and then start pumping water again. So uh, I might have to rethink how I, how I adjust the temperature uh, on the coils there. So uh, 
I'll figure something out here. I just wanted to kind of kind of show it while it was happening, I guess. Um, I see that cheap valve there is leaking a little bit too. Uh, not a surprise. It's probably not meant for heat. So anyway, um, the air to air is working good. Um, it's like I say, holding us a decent temperature, but uh, down low you can really feel feel the cool. And uh, whether or not this is the answer, I don't know at this point. Um, we're still oh, we're holding we're holding our eight or nine degrees there. So, anyways, over for now.